Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let us learn about one more interesting service based on need. Let's say I have a company. I have a company. Every day, my company got a lot of data. Now, I am expecting to analyze that data. Since I am getting a lot of data in unstructured format, I am storing that data in S3 bucket. Since the data is big data, now what are the options do I have to query my data and analyze my results? So I have my data in S3 bucket. Now what I am expecting is I want to analyze that data. So for that we have three options. What are they? Reno engine instances and presto engine instances so we can choose either reno or presto instances in order to query our data which is stored under s3 this reno or presto these two are engines so what type of engines are the, these are sql based engines we can able to query big data which is stored in S3 by using these two Trino or Presto engines by using SQL queries. So in that way, we can able to query the data which is present under S3 by using this Trino or Presto engines. Whereas coming to third option that is Amazon Athena. By using Amazon Athena also, we can able to query our data which is present under S3 by using SQL queries only. Now, so these are the three options do we have that is Trino, Presto and Amazon Athena. Now the question is, I have Trino and Presto, then why do I choose this Athena? Or else, when do I choose this Trino or Presto and when do I choose this Amazon Athena? So for Trino or Presto, we need to create cluster of instances what we need to do we need to create cluster of instances and we need to install this trino or presto software in our instances we need to install this trino software or presto software on those cluster of instances on our instances then we can use SQL queries to query the data which is stored under this S3 bucket. So if you want, if you want to use these two, then who is providing the underlying infrastructure for you? You are the only person. So for these Trino or Presto, we need to create and manage underlying infrastructure what we need to do we need to create and manage our underlying infrastructure if we choose these two options we are the person need to create the underlying infrastructure that is nothing but a cluster of instances and we need to manage those cluster of instances so i think this may be burden to us right yes so let's say i don't want to manage the underlying infrastructure I don't want to manage the underlying infrastructure and I just want to run SQL queries on this S3 data. So whatever the data which is present under S3, I just expecting to run SQL queries. In this scenario, we need to choose this Amazon Athena. What we need to choose? Amazon Athena in this scenario. If we use Amazon Athena, then we don't need to create or manage underlying infrastructure. If we choose Trino or Presto, then we need to manage underlying infrastructure. We need to create underlying infrastructure. Whereas coming to Amazon Athena, do we need to manage underlying infrastructure? No. We don't need to create or manage underlying infrastructure then who will take care of creation and management of underlying infrastructure for this Amazon Athena, AWS, 
AWS will create and manage underlying infrastructure for us. So we call that's why we call this Amazon Athena as fully managed service. Since AWS is managing everything backend infrastructure for us, we call this as fully managed service. Amazon Athena also comes under fully managed service. So we just query our data which is present under S3 by using SQL queries which are running on Amazon Athena. Okay. In background, in background, what this Amazon Athena in background, Amazon Athena works on what? It needs to present on any of the infrastructure, right? Yes. So in background, this Amazon Athena works on what? This Amazon Athena works on AWS step function. What? By using AWS step function, this Amazon Athena on top of AWS step function, this Amazon Athena will work. So by using this Amazon Athena, what we can able to do? We can able to query the data present in S3 buckets. So whatever the S3 data we have, whatever the big data we have under S3, we can able to query the data by using what, which language, SQL queries. So anyone ask you what is Amazon Athena, then what is your answer? Amazon Athena is a fully managed AWS service where it is used to query, it is used to query and analyze the data which is present under S3. By using what query language we are querying? SQL language. So this Amazon Athena is used to query big data present in S3 by using SQL query language. Right? Yes. Now let's have one more question. After querying S3 data by using Amazon Athena, we need to store results, right? Yes, we need to store results. So we need to select a destination S3 bucket while creating Athena. While creating Athena, we need to select a destination S3 bucket to store what? To store the results. After querying, we got some results, right? Yes. Those results, in order to store them under S3 bucket, S3 bucket, S3 destination bucket, we need to, we need to configure that. We need to select the destination S3 bucket while creating this Amazon Athena. Okay. We can also have, so what about data protection? Data protection we got by using encryption, right? Yes. We can also have that option. We can also have that option to encrypt the resulted data storing in S3 bucket. So whatever the resulting data that you are storing in destination S3 bucket, in order to provide protection to that, you have an option called encryption. So while creating this Athena, you have two options. One is destination bucket. So that you need to select that you have option to select. And you also have an option to select encryption. If you want, you can select. If you don't want, then leave it. So this is about Amazon Athena. Sorry. Let's have a quick recap on till now what we have seen. We can analyze S3 big data. We can analyze S3 big data by using which service? Amazon Athena. By using what? By using SQL queries. What is this Amazon Athena? Do we need to manage underlying infrastructure? No. AWS will manage for us. So that's why Amazon Athena is a fully managed service. So while configuring, we have an option called destination S3 bucket and encryption option also available for us in order to tell my storing data is encrypted or not and 
where my result will be stored so those things we can able to tell by using destination bucket and encryption right yes so from this by using amazon athena service i can able to query the data which is present under s3 now let's say i want to monitor the logs i want to analyze the logs i want to analyze logs so what are the logging monitoring services i have i have cloud watch i have cloud trail so these are the two mostly importantly we see in the monitoring services now they produce logs right yes so in order to watch in order to analyze those logs first we need to put those logs under s3 by default cloud trail logs and cloud formation lo cloud front logs and elastic load balancer so these all logs by default they will be stored under s3 only by default these logs will be stored under s3 only cloud watch logs will be present outside also this uh, aws glue logs also present outside only so in this uh, cloud watch we have log groups what is that log groups by using that if we select that option then we have an option to export those logs to amazon s3 so by using that option we can happily move our data our logs from amazon cloud watch to s3 so by default elastic load balancer logs will be present under s3 stored under s3 and by default cloud front logs will be stored under s3 by default cloud trail logs will be stored under s3 and since we export our cloud watch logs to s3 that also stored under s3 so all my logs related to these services will be stored under s3 can i able to query can i able to analyze those logs yes so by using this amazon athena can i able to analyze those logs yes we can able to analyze by using uh, which query language by using sql we can able to analyze the logs which are present in this s3 nothing but we can consider that as data which is present under s3 so by using athena since we are integrating or moving our data from multiple services to s3 we can even able to analyze logs as well so indirectly we are analyzing our logs data by using amazon athena so by using amazon athena we can able to monitor uh, we can able to analyze or query the data which is present under s3 and if we want to monitor or analyze the logs then we just move our logs to s3 and we just do analyze that logs by using athena sql queries you can see i have noted down these as well that is by using cloud trail cloud watch and elastic load balancer logs they are actually normally stored under s3 and if we want to monitor if we want to analyze cloud watch logs then we can have option to export those logs to s3 then by using athena by using amazon athena service we can able to query the data which is present under s3 you can also use athena to query metadata what data metadata stored in your glue data catalog so under glue data catalog also you can able to query the metadata stored in it if you want to query the metadata stored in aws glue data catalog then also use this amazon athena okay so we have seen by using sql queries we can able to analyze the data so let's see an example of how to query how an sql query will look like for querying a single file how an 
SQL query will look like and what we are doing in that. So let us see with the example. Here you can see this is one of the example. This is one of the example. In order to querying or else you can say analyzing bucket. So here you can see I have provided the bucket name under S3. I have provided the bucket name under this I have selected a folder. So within this, within this you have to write the file name. Let's say my file is CSV file. So I have written like file.csv. So like this you have to copy your ARN for your bucket. Then you need to provide if there are any folders exact path you need to provide for that file. So let's say I have provided the exact path. This is the exact location of my file which is present under S3 bucket. Now what I am doing is first here in these here this indicates these lines indicates so actually two hyphens indicates two hyphens indicate comment so I'm providing comment here yeah I'm providing comment here actually this this indicates what is we are creating an external table. What we are creating? We are creating an external table with what? My table. This is my table name. By using this table name, we are creating an external table. So by using what? We are providing the column values and their data types as well. In order to First here what we are doing is we are creating an external table under Amazon Athena and there we are storing our data which is present under the file CSV file which is stored under S3. You can say S3 data we are storing on that external table then we are querying that table that is the thing we in that way we are querying our data by using Amazon Athena. So what we are doing, we are creating the table under Amazon Athena and we are loading our S3 data into that table and we are querying that table. So I hope you understood the process. So now let's see the statements. Here you can see this, these lines indicates creating an external table, creating an external table with the name, my table. You can replace this my table with whatever the table name you want by using that name you can able to replace here and you can able to create your own table under your Amazon Athena. You have an option that is editor option. So there you need to create there you need to execute your SQL queries and by using those SQL queries only you can able to create your tables under Amazon Athena. So let's say I have created what my table. So by using this table name, I have created. So what does this contain? How many columns? One, two, three. It contains three columns. First column holds stringy type data. Second column holds integer type data. Third column holds double type data. So like this, we need to specify based on schema, based on schema of your data, which is present under your file. CSV file CSV. So based on that, you need to you need to provide these column names as well as their data types. So that you need to provide here. Then after you can see these lines. What these lines indicate, sir? These lines indicates here. Sardi Sardi stands for serialization and deserialization. Why do we need this serialization and deserialization? Actually, our data is present in the form of original data is present in the form of CSV. You can see 
our original data present in S3 bucket is in the form of CSV file. In order to transport the transport or move the data, it requires a lot of time in internet. So what is the best format which moves or transport very fastly in during transmissions or is JSON or XML format. This JSON format data or XML format of data will be sent very quickly or will be transmitted very quickly. So that's why by using serialization, what we are doing is we are converting our original data that is CSV files to transform data that is JSON or XML format files. Then we are transmitting our data. Then we are transmitting our data from S3 bucket to where? To our Amazon Athena. So whenever it reaches to there, we are again doing deserialization. We are again doing deserialization. What is this deserialization, sir? So it just reverts to serialization. Here we are converting, we are converting that transformed data into original data. We are getting the original data from where? From transformed data. We are getting the original data by using this deserialization. That is, we are converting again this JSON or XML format to CSV files format and then we are loading that data here. So, for that, for that scenario, we use it this SCR DE, set D. For that, we have already inbuilt, we have already inbuilt option that is open CSV set D. Here, for any CSV file, the separator character is comma. So by using comma, the data will be separated in CSV file. So that we represented here and quote character also we represented by double quote and escape character we represented by double forward slashes. So we have defined here steady properties. Next, we, we are providing our destination file location. So this is the exact destination file location that, that we are specifying here. So that's it. We are creating a new external table and we are serializing and deserializing our data and loading that data into our external table, whatever the table that we are creating. And finally, we are specifying where our actual file is there in S3. So that's it. So this actual file is taken over and first this external table is created. Then by using serialization and deserialization, this CSV file, which is present under S3, that particular bucket, that particular folder, is it was taken and it was serialized and deserialized and loaded into the whatever the external table that you created under Amazon Athena. So you got that table under Amazon Athena now. Now you can normally execute whatever the SQL queries you want on that table. So in this way, in this way, you can able to execute SQL queries. Let's say I want to see all the data which is present under my table. So for that, you have an you have SQL query that is select star from star indicates selecting all the columns from what is the table name my table so that I am providing so simple that's it this is one of the SQL query to for what this SQL query this SQL query for showing all the data in table for displaying or showing all the data in my table, my table. So in this way, we can able to query our data by using Athena. So here the must and should important point is what we are doing. We are creating an external table and by using serialization and deserialization method, we are taking or we, we are accepting the data from S3 files and we loaded our data into our external table that we created and 
in that table we are performing our queries so that's the thing here happens you can see for querying a single file you typically create an external table so we have created in these steps and that corresponds to structure of your file so whatever the file structure whatever the columns that this file have those columns you need to create and whatever the data types what are the data those columns holding based on that you need to provide data types as well for those columns then the table schema defines your column names data types and its properties this is actually your table schema so this is how you can able to create your external table in amazon athena and you can able to query that table that you created in amazon athena for loading the data into this you can see we have serialization and deserialization method formats and these two indicates comments wherever you see double hyphen in sql those represents comments so in this way you can able to store your file data in external table and you can able to query that data by using sql commands by using this amazon athena okay now let's see what are the supporting data formats what are the supporting data formats now we have seen csv file we have seen an example on csv file we have retrieved the data from csv file and stored that in the form of table in our amazon athena we created a query and we run that query by using that we got some response so like that the destination files which are stored under s3 bucket so the data stored under s3 bucket this amazon athena supports these data formats that is csv file format it will support and tsv file format also it supports and raw logs also it supports and apache logs simple or nested json files and avaro and orc apache parquet compressed data also it was accepting supporting so actually the point here is if you use compressed data or apache parquet or orc or avro formats then your processing will be very fast compared to other like common normal data formats that is csv so if you are processing large files if you are processing large tables then prefer to choose apache parquet or orc or compressed files or avro formats then it will provide your response very quickly so that you will be charged very less so what are the ways do we have to connect to this amazon athena so in order to implement automation what we use we use a lambda function right yes in aws we use lambda function mostly in order to implement automation of small scripts so by using this lambda function can i able to trigger this amazon athena to perform some analysis on this s3 data yes we can able to use this lambda function to trigger this amazon athena and can able to perform some data analysis on s3 data we can able to use this lambda function as well not only this lambda function by using software development kits you can able to connect to this amazon athena and query or analyze the data which is present on s3 so like this you can able to integrate multiple services with amazon athena in order to achieve the task that you require right yeah so there are two more important points that is you can able to execute multiple queries you might execute them so in order to execute multiple queries you need to use templates multiple templates to execute these multiple queries you can execute them serially or even parallelly as well so parallel is the recommended so that you will be charged very less so because uh, it will be executed in less time right yes even this point also we have discussed we use aws group clorer it is used to query large data sets and 
ingest data into S3. So at last we have Athena pricing. So let us see that for every TB we have scanned by using Athena. So for every TB we have scanned by using Athena, we will be charged five US dollars. So currently charges are these. We'll be charged five US dollars for every TB scanning. So whatever the S3 data we are scanning, right? Yes. For that data scanning, we will be charged for five US dollars for every TB. Every one TB of data scanned under your S3 bucket. In order to execute, in order to execute your queries, we need to provide capacity units also data processing units. Here we call those capacity units as data processing units in Amazon Athena. We need to provide this data processing units in order to perform querying action. So one data processing unit is equals to four virtual CPUs and 16 GB memory. One data processing unit is equals to four virtual CPUs and 16 GB of memory at a rate of 0 0.3 USD US dollars per every hour. So per, per every DPU hour will be charged 0 0.30 USD dollars. Actually for calculating the data that is scanned, it will be calculate the nearest MB and it will consider 10 MB as the minimum query. Per query, it will consider at least 10 MB will be consumed. Like that, it will consider the nearest MBs of data that is scanned based on that we will be charged by using this Amazon Athena and for processing that data, we use this data processing units. So for these data processing units, how many hours our data is processed based on that DPU hours, we will be charged 0 0.3 US dollars per every DPU hours. So one DPU will contains four virtual CPUs and 16 GB of data. This is all about in detail knowledge on Amazon Athena. I hope you understood this video. You have some knowledge recap or you, you got some knowledge from this video. I feel this video is contentful. If you feel this video is contentful, then please like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. Thanks for watching again. See you back in the next video. Until then, bye bye guys.